morning to you all. I know Job has told us uh, he has done the protocol observation. So we would repeat just to thank the PS uh, for industry for coming. I think this is uh, one of our first engagements uh, since your appointment. So congratulations on behalf of CAM uh, members, the board, and the staff. Nakaribisa, once again. So I'm going to give a few remarks, but I will leave important aspects of the industry to the sector chairs and also the ministry uh, that is the PS and Mr. Kitenda who also is a, a professional in this, uh, when uh, he will be giving the remarks on behalf of the PS of investment. First of all, we are happy uh, to host you this morning. This is uh, a collaboration between ourselves and IDH. And maybe Jenny, maybe if people have not seen you, maybe uh, Jenny is a country director uh, for IDH, and of course, your team. We're grateful for this opportunity. And just to highlight that this year, CAM has identified four key pillars of focus, which is going to be contained in our business development plan for 2023, 2024, 2025. And these four key pillars are one, global competitiveness. We have to be competitive as a country, not against our neighbors, but against the best of the best in the world. When we go to the marketplace, the customers, most cases, don't really care whether the product is coming from uh, developing world or coming from elsewhere in the world what they want is the best quality at the best price possible and for us to be able to do that we have to ensure that you're globally competitive both at national level the policies the laws the regulations the inputs to make it easier to do business but also at the farm level and farms represented here by our members make sure that yes, the country is improving is a cost of the business, but also at your level, you're improving uh, your efficiency. And that is why we're here because you see the nexus between that pillar of global competitiveness with the project that we're starting today. I will launch it today with IDH. So that's number one. Number two, is export-led growth strategy. We have over, generally, we have over 5,000 manufacturers. And some of them, you may not consider them as manufacturers, but they are. We've just come out of a week where Kenyan parents, all of them, are looking for uniform, and all of us rush the last minute. One of the unlikely places that you may not know that people are looking for uniform is the whole market. And you go there, you get amazed because the whole market was busy. They have the labels for and the logos for all the schools in Kenya. And actually I want to go and visit uh, because myself I was struggling to go and look for uniform for my children. And someone said, why did you go to the whole market? So, it is vibrant. And I was saying, if this country was focusing, because you buy new clothes for, for, for school uniform, if we focused on that progressively, perhaps the whole country would be like a good market. But that's for another thing. So I'm not talking about Mpumba. So number two, so this export-led growth strategy, which now has been adopted by the cabinet, you also see 
when we are globally competitive, we increase our exports. And I know Pankaj will be giving us the numbers, and some of those numbers are shocking. But even though it apparels and, and exports that we do to uh, uh, US and abroad, we are living in Africa, we're only doing 550 million out of a market of 100 billion plus dollars. So you'll hear more about that. So, and again, this project dovetails very well with export-led growth strategy. The other one is industrial in agriculture. We are looking at this project, looking at the missing links between or in the whole vertical value chain from farm to fashion. Where is the opportunity? Where are the gaps? And you'll see again, that is part of what we're calling industrializing. You bring agriculture on one side, industry on the other side, you match them. And I think many people are doing that, including a professor at Rivertex, uh, because uh, he's doing that from a cotton uh, all the way to uh, garments. And if you have not visited Rivertex, please uh, take uh, time to go to Eldorex and visit them. I was there myself. And you didn't believe that uh, some of the shirts that you think they are very expensive actually are very affordable. And the last one is SME pillar. And again, you will see that this project touches on that. So we are very, very proud to work with IDH because it touches on all the pillars that we have set ourselves for. And this project mobilized almost a million dollars to be able to execute this. And you will see that because textile and apparel sector has been identified as an arrowhead for big push manufacturing by the government of Kenya. So we are actually in the right place. We are at the right moment. What sometimes Greeks called Kairos moment, the moment where you will be able to will be able to see perhaps movement that we may not have seen before. And I don't want to take a lot of time, but I just wanted to highlight a few focus areas for the project. The analysis of the local or domestic and apparel sector calls for urgent intervention, primarily to close gaps, to run an efficient farm to fashion value chain. This is where we bring everybody on board. The Ministry of Industry, the, ministry, the State Department of Industry, State Department of Investment, State Department of Cooperatives, Ministry and State Department of SMEs, everybody, agriculture. And this is one of the things that we'll be intending to do with the help of the PS uh, industry and the PS investments. The linkages between textile and apparel sector with other sectors. I've mentioned about agriculture, energy, and this project again has a component on energy efficiency, finance, chemical industry, packaging, retail, logistics. And if you look at all this vertical and horizontal integration, it has a huge halo effect on the economy. And that is what we attempt to do with this partnership. Has specific deliverables, specific outcomes. This is when we'll make sure, and Jerry, just to assure you, that the project is run professionally with clear timelines, clear outcomes, and we'll be able to share again with the team. It brings together policymakers, regulators, manufacturers, workers, brands to engage in forward-looking business, governance practices to reconcile competitiveness and sustainability. So key areas of focus, sector governance, industry compliance, good business practices, better jobs, better working environment, environmental leadership, 
that is environmental practice, transparency, compliance, all the way from the farm level to the industrial park level. And I'm happy because I can see the CEO for EPZA Day and the chairman are here with us. So also this has a component to work together to make sure that you're providing better jobs. We can do good by doing it well. Improved skills and worker representation. Globally, the buyers of what we are selling are very, very interested in how we are managing our environment, how sustainable the industry is, how we are ensuring there's no child labor and forced labor in our cotton farms, in our farms, in our factories, how we are taking care of employees' welfare. And this, all this, will help us to bypass perhaps what has always been a challenge. We talk about the productivity, which I think need to be enhanced as part of this program, but also cost of labor. So global uh, manufacturers are, yes, looking at cost of labor and cost of the products, but also they're looking at this compliance, ESG compliance. So in conclusion, I want to thank you again, uh, IDH uh, specifically, uh, our sector leadership, because you've been involved in this, provided a lot of leadership on this. And we want to thank the government for uh, coming on board, and we will work together. We've done mapping of this sector, both domestic and export-oriented. and export oriented. We actually know, and I, I know Mr. Kidenda, you know, we've spent a lot of time cracking numbers, and uh, perhaps you have an opportunity to share some of them, uh, to show that it is possible to grow this country. We are talking about hybriding the manufacturing to GDP from 7.2% to 